This is a plywood pattern for the stem of the boat. Sits there that way up. This is the scarf onto the keel. Now, traditionally, you go out into the woods, find an oak tree with a, a bent branch, hack it down, carry it home, slice it up, a bit like that. And that's what they call a grown oak bend, because the grain of the branch is sweeping around the corner. And you'd use something like that to make a stem. You'd stick your pattern on, draw around it, cut it out, and go from there. This bend isn't big enough for the stem we need. And also, these days, because there's not so much oak around and it's difficult to get hold of, you really want oak that's been air dried. And air drying takes about a year for every inch of thickness of the stock. So you're looking at a piece of oak like this being stacked out in the open with sticks between it and the one below it and the one above it so the air can ventilate through. You're looking at stacking that up for three or four years before it's nearly ready to use. And the problem with that is that storing stuff costs money now and there aren't many timber yards that are prepared to take up a massive amount of space in their yard with wood that's stacking their drying because when they go to get it out in three or four years time they can find that there are shakes, splits, wormholes, decay, rot and so this lovely piece of wood that they've been looking after for four years costing them space, time, handling, everything else is no no good for anything but firewood. So it is a costly business and so if you said half the bends they stacked ended up being useless, it actually doubles the price on the ones that survive. So oak bends aren't cheap. They tend to be not completely dry now because they're keen to sell them rather than leave them sitting in the yard for another 18 months, two years. So when you're cutting out something like this, you're exposing damp wood to the atmosphere for the first time. So you can spend a good day marking it up, cutting it out, planing it to shape, planing bevels, rebates, shaping the top, cutting the scarf, fastening it to the keel, setting it up on the strong back, doing all that and then over the two or so months it takes you to build the boat, because the stem's now exposed to the air and is drying, then it starts warping, twisting, splitting, and so this lovely oak bend that you started off with two months ago has now sometimes nearly ruined the boat. Because of the difficulty in getting oak bends of the right sweep of grain, the right dryness, it's easier, although it takes longer, it's easier to laminate. And for laminating, you use your stem pattern and make yourself a jig. And if I can thread this in through here. That's the stem pattern. These are our shaped blocks of wood that are shaped to fit the inside of the stem pattern. 
So our blocks of wood here are bolted through a nice piece of plywood because there's quite a lot of pressure on them when you're clamping the laminates in. Cut and plane some laminates. There's sort of two ways of bending them really. One is to cut thicker laminates, steam them, clamp them around the jig, leave them for a few days to set in that shape then take it all apart, dry them out because obviously the steam has made them wet, let them dry and then glue them together. The method I prefer is to cut thinner laminates that will actually bend around without breaking, without any steam. These have been clamped around this jig for about a week without being glued. Hopefully getting them used to being that shape. What we're going to do is undo the clamps, take the laminates off, cover the jig in polythene so that the glues don't stick, and then glue up the laminates, clamp them back in place, and leave them for 24 hours. The easy bit really is clamping them in when they're dry. The minute they get glue on them they're like a slippery slippy thing that wants to go everywhere but where you want it to go. So in order to help us effectively remake the stem in the shape it is now it pays just to put few lines across to aid location later. That's near the top. We now have a couple of diagonal lines down around the middle. It's not essential that it's spot on. <coughs> But we, we've got the scarf mark down here. You can see from the pattern, if we put the pattern back on top. This is where our scarf comes into, here. So we could just draw that on there. So we just want to make sure that we've got enough wood so that when we've cut that scarf, we've got solid timber there and there's nothing missing. We undo the clamps.
Well, these F clamps are handy because they're quite strong. They have got limited travel, so a bit like a sash clamp, every three inches or so, you've got to stop and Now, even though these have been bent around there for over a week, they're still fairly determined to be straight. So, um, we're going to have a little bit of a fight to get them around there when they're covered in glue. But hey. Be honest if the strips if you're trying to plane strips down to three millimeters or four millimeters whatever they are and the grain isn't pretty much along them the planer is going to tear them to pieces and some of the I've chopped most of them away but the, the strips that failed the audition I mean, that was split on the end, but you can see there that the, the planer has torn the grain out because that's quite short grain, and if that gets bent, it will hopefully break. And you can see there that the grain is quite short going through the piece of wood. Um, so the planer is the first... Um, stage of quality control really and the second stage of quality control is when you actually bend them around the jig dry if they if they bend round like that then there isn't a lot wrong with them if you get them to there and they break oh well a bit more firewood So only the best bits of wood end up getting glued up really. <laughs> 